Johnny Goldmane, beloved planeswalker, now Phyrexianized. And while Wizards of the Coast has not taken one second to mourn or even acknowledge the destruction of such a popular character, most of us hold a Johnny's memory in our hearts. And this is especially true if you're the wonderfully talented and good-natured Magic the Gathering artist, Aaron Miller. Most of us, myself included, are not Aaron Miller, and there is a lot of things to learn about him besides his portrait of a Johnny. So, as the YouTubers say, let's just jump into it. And by it, I mean the interview. Start the interview. So, thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad to be here. So, um, hopefully you don't hear the people doing the uh, lawn work too much because apparently they're doing lawn work now at noon, but, uh, eh, okay, sera, sera. not as bad as the time where, when I interviewed Mogli Vinouf, my fire alarms went off. That was oh. a treat. Oh, no. <laughs> no uh, what's, really the, what's the shirt you got on? That's a cool looking shirt. Did you do the art for that? No, it's the D&D shirt I picked up at Gen Con. <laughs> Gen Con. How'd that go? I heard it was a good Gen Con for you. Yeah, it was great. Um, I, I I had a lot of fun. It's been a few years since um, I'd been able to do one. So it was really nice being back. And the last couple of years, I've had a, a completely interesting experience doing a little bit of work with uh, eBay uh, on their booth. <clears throat> like eBay? <laughs> You, yeah, you, like yeah. You, is eBay, eBay. the eBay booth, like you mean? Cause... They they're there for marketing, you know. They're um, so they they don't sell anything there. They they do a lot of giveaways, and it's a lot of, I guess, promotion and um, education and how their business aligns with uh, maybe uh, different communities that might want to buy and sell, and maybe some of the higher end stuff and how they how they can uh uh they're facilitating like the high-end sales i'm not i'm not really that into what exactly what they're doing but um that's that's the gist of it, it was um, a little bit of education on like, like maybe so you're gonna sell a uh um you know i don't know uh, did you sell a, you a, make an old card any old card that's oh, worth okay. like 10 grand and you you buy it on ebay and you're like well how do i know i'm getting the real thing right yeah you well yeah that's a lot of money to spend on you know someone sending you a fake card even if it's mm -hmm. really they're and getting good at it too so i guess they they have some interesting intermediary where someone that it gets sent and the money gets held everything is in stasis until everything checks out and, and even you, if you get the card and try and pull a fast one and send back a fake one it goes to the same company who checks it out and goes like no nope, this this is not the same card we sent out so you you worked with with them or did you buy cards through them I'm oh no 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 so by my little situation was part of uh uh as a more as a designer um they needed someone to do artwork for a play method that they wanted to give away oh so i did that they needed someone to do pins that they were going to give away they needed someone to do artwork for the t-shirts that all the staff was going to wear wow ebay they, huh damn someone to do all the graphics uh for the booth that um was there and uh i had gotten contacted a couple years ago to i now i mean now i can't remember if i got first contact to do playmat art or um some art for an ad in a <clears throat> in a magazine it's one or the other but it just kept going and eventually when they contacted me for the booth i i've had you know 10 years of design experience and even a little bit in uh, uh, trade show displays. Strangely enough, it was all like an easy, yeah, I can handle that. So it was, it, but it was easy for you. Yeah, it was. I mean, because I have the, I have the skills. So it was uh, uh, easy and 
familiar. I, I knew what I was looking at when I'm getting the plans from the, the the architects and stuff. So it was easy enough. So, so yeah, I, it was fun. Yeah, so I was watching an interview with you uh, in 2014, and it's amazing the amount of um, of like uh, growth. And you're more, you're so much more secure than when you were uh, like at that point in time, like it's leaps and bounds. Um, I, what I, what I do want to talk about first is that you very early on, you met Eric Deschamps and it was it in school. Uh, it, well, it was a, a, a summer workshop at the illustration master class. Now you guys know what's the story. I want the story behind that. Like what was, what was the, uh, the, the meet cute as it were. So we just ended up in the, in the in the same group they we were split up because there's only so much space in the rooms and uh so our group got uh we it, it, interesting enough anyone that been to the master class the very first year you know half the class got to work like within the school where it was located and the other half um we were working in uh like a, a a store that didn't have any renters. So she was able, it was like a pop-up art school at that point. <clears throat> and so, so half of us, you know, were working a few blocks away and it was great. It was not a bad thing. It was just, it was just different. Um, and so our little group, um, we were uh, kind of isolated, but, you know, just because we're two blocks away from, where everything was happening and so we got to spend a lot more time walking back and forth to uh, uh lunches and lectures and stuff like that and and eric just happened to set up right next to me no one really knew each other so we just ended up setting up next to each other and uh so then because we were neighbors we just chatted the whole time and and uh you know like the, the idea that he was a magic artist at the time was just like, I kind of, I knew it about the game, but I didn't, it didn't like hit me, you know, it'd be like, if you'd never, you knew about Star Wars and then you got to meet like Harrison Ford, <laughs> you know, and he's like, or Mark Hamill. And you're like, oh, I think I've heard of Star Wars. You know, my sister watched Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but it, it, so that's what it was like. You had said in an interview that that I guess then around that time magic must have become a goal for you uh, because it, you it became a goal because of that workshop. So I went to the workshop because I knew who um, Boris was, and and that was the only artist that was the only name I recognized, and I was like, oh, cool. You know, the, the things that I wanted to try and get into, the, the fantasy art and stuff, you know, I, I knew him. So I was like, okay, well, any any workshop that's got him involved, I, I know this is, I'm on the right track. I'm going down the right path. And so all the other names, like, I didn't know who any of these people were. Nobody. You know, Rebecca Gay's name didn't mean anything to me. Wow. <laughs> Donato. Did not no no not a single other person's name did I know except for uh, Boris. Wow! And it's impressive. Once I got there, um, uh, part of the introduction ceremony and and, and um, Rebecca to, always had done a great job with this. What she does is she has a great soundtrack and shows everyone's name the instructor's names and you know a breadth of their work a little history of their work and you know when you start seeing all the work popping up you know it's just it's mind-blowing so it's like what so I, I knew I was in the right place um right then and then of course going through that week of all the lectures and and meeting and talking to all the instructors that 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 path seemed to kind of started aligning that it was I my my understanding was the book covers were options but now this was an option too oh great you know so I was just like watching all of my options sort of unfold you know and 
And so how long did it take you from that point to your first magic card? What was that span of time? Well, that was 2008. And I think I got my first card in 2012. So, so did, you know, a lot of knocking at the door kind of situation and, and yeah, it was, well, yeah, ever, ever since that, 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 uh, that workshop, that, that week, it was, you know, pedal to the metal, you know, like, uh, skills honing I, you know started doing um life drawing and at the time i had uh w- w- strangely enough okay that that whole year changed well it changed for a lot of people because it was 2008 um yeah so it, was a- it was a it was a tumultuous year for everyone yeah so that was the summer and you know i started like okay this is what i want to do and i still kind of had a Permaland's day job and um but i i was totally focused on trying to do some artwork and skills and like knowing that's where i'm going five-year plan type stuff and then and then come october was the very first ilixcon so i was like well i'm gonna go to that so i i went out there and in between um, the workshop and Ilixcon, I had gotten a new job as an art director. It was a terrible job, but technically I had the title of art director. And what, what made it so terrible? Uh, well, I was never allowed to meet the clients, to talk to them in person. Um, I, everything had to be filtered through a salesperson. It was. <laughs> It was really weird. Um, uh, the, they they still wanted me to do all this design work and never gave me all this time to do the stuff that they needed to get done as an art director. And yeah, it was just very, it just didn't work very well. And, but after I came back from IlixCon that Monday, they're like, oh, we don't need you anymore. So, uh so I called my wife and let her know that like, okay, I don't have this job anymore. And I had to make a decision either. I had to focus on getting another design job that I didn't want to do, or I take this opportunity to focus on illustration. And she said two things. She was tired of me being stressed out. She didn't want two people coming home stressed out. And she said, as long as I don't have to pay for any of your business stuff, uh, do what you want. And she never, ever had to help help me pay for anything business-wise. I mean, we needed uh, help. I needed more help from her, like, say, for the mortgage and other bills or anything like that. And she's like, I'll cover that. But like um, anything related, like my computer or any anything related to the business, she's like, I'm not putting any money into that. You got to you got to make it work. And I did. I just kept I kept finding little jobs here and there. And I kept going back to the master class again. I, I would I was throwing some money on credit cards and I wasn't happy about that. Um So the next year I went and I had done more work. I think that that also that summer, Rebecca asked if anyone wanted to come help her at San Diego Comic-Con. So I was like, I'll go. You know, I talked to my wife. I was like, can we do this? And I think she started to see that there could something could come of it. And, And I think in the long, the long game of it, it was helpful. The short game, it had no real results but the long game i think it actually helped yeah i mean well i mean if you're you know hanging with that crew it certainly is not a it's not a bad crew to to be hanging out with and, and then if you got the skills to back it that's it's, it's a yeah. win-win so I, um so like when do you think when would you say um and I, i'm skipping ahead but i am kind of curious when do you think at what point do you feel like you become comfortable knowing that you have made your like your 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 print on uh your imprint on uh 
being a, a successful working artist? Like, when did that take over? Because now it's astonishing. You you are uh, you know you teach a lot now. It's it's you're 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 the you know you're the guru now. So you know and and so when did you get that like that moment of re not relaxation, but maybe like you're less stressful. Oh, it was that. It was that outside. <laughs> that was that was me desperately trying to mute some uh, somebody on a motorcycle who I. If my theory would be that they are, you know, uh, trying to make up for something. But uh. <laughs> yeah, no, that was. Uh, I promise I didn't break wind like that. Um, but uh, but to uh, but you know, did you do you find like any sort of like um, security in it, or is, are you always on edge about it? Is it something that is? Uh, I think we're always a little on edge about it. I mean, I get what you're asking, though. There's like, there's <clears throat> definitely at some point where I go from being less confident to more confident. And I think that's the way that artists will maybe kind of see it is, you know, these, you know, there's always these levels of skill. And then there's always, then the next thing is these levels of confidence, which strangely enough also coincide with increases in level of skill with with that confidence boost um or those just knowing that you can get it done and so i know at the beginning i had a lot of uh fake confidence which helps out mm -hmm. um, or, you know i i i knew i i needed a lot of work i knew i needed a lot of work but I knew, also knew based on some other stuff I was seeing, I was like, but I'm still good enough to, um, that I should get some kind of work. Um, I, I, I was able to see that, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't ready to take a job away from Donato, which that's what they said, the, you know, that first week they're like, you know, you're, we're teaching you to take our jobs, not like take them away, but like, to join them but the only way you get to join them is you, you have to compete yeah you know you, yeah you have they're not gonna not give me a job to give you one because i'm already here so i knew that i had some levels to go and um it definitely was had been a few years so it has 2008 and now it's 2022 so somewhere in between, stuff really started to click. So it, um, I, I, I can't think of a, a moment offhand or a situation that was like, oh, that's when everything shifted. Um, I think it's just this kind of almost like watching paint dry or grass grow. It just keeps happening. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait, how did I get here? Um, and I think it's definitely had to have been at least at the, the, maybe the eight, eight or nine year mark, you know? Yeah. Like, it's, um, it's, it's interesting to, and you mentioned in an interview, in a previous interview that there was, you, you wouldn't have gotten the job with magic because of the way your portfolio was, was viewed or something, something about the, the way some, I think, uh, I believe it was Jeremy Jarvis saw one painting first before another, and you said that if it had been reversed, that you yeah. wouldn't have gotten the job. What what is so that was at the San Diego Comic Con that I mentioned in two thousand eight. <clears throat> so, um, I just hadn't really had any any interviews of that kind, and so that was kind of my first one i was it's i'm not saying that like oh i miss an opportunity to lie um so that that's not really what happened i just didn't understand at the time kind of what he was looking at um what what decisions he was making compared to some of the decisions that um i was making at the time like i had just also picked up a Jeremy Lipking book. And so Lipking is great. Um, and that was definitely like, I even think I mentioned it's like, oh, I just got to, I want to, I'm aiming to paint like this. And at the time, I'm not really sure 
that would even have aligned with something that Jeremy was looking for. Like, oh, okay. So he knew from what I told him and showed him where I was at. And at that time, I just just wasn't ready. And what he was seeing was that um, I, I still had a bit of, um, uh, uh, I can't think of the right word, where, where my paintings were possibly not going to have the same outcome in quality um, it, uh, repetitively. So like he liked this one and then he, um, that's why he was asking about the order. Oh, and, like for consistency. Like, so yeah, the, yeah, consistency. He was looking for either a level up in, in, in what was happening. Like, oh, okay, these were separated and this is a level up. And if this is where we're here now, then this is what I can expect and not this. So since okay. the order reversed, that's a consistency issue. And he needs to know that the artist that he's going to hire at the time when he was doing that, that they were going to bring consistency or at the same time, uh, uh, every art director has to look at the, the worst one and say, this is what I should expect. Um, uh, from this artist no matter how good everything else is I have to work I have to work that I'm going to get his worst and always be happy when I don't get that okay yeah, all right I got you so like essentially like he wants to make sure that that card or that artwork that he was seeing like if that would be the worst possible outcome yeah that's, and then he would be okay with that being the worst at least I mean I can't really speak for Jeremy but right. I'm we're we're all here. I'm assuming that's that's how that part of the interview went. So I, I wasn't really ready just right then, but D and D was because they were together, and D and D was like, "Well, we'll work with you." And and of course, I didn't do the correct following up, and so I didn't get to work on D and D for another like two years because. I kept waiting. I was like, well, she said she was going to give me work and I never got any. And, uh -huh. and, and, and again, that's that uh, level of um, self-confidence I didn't have to where it's like, I'm just going to go reach out and, and start having a dialogue and get things moving. And I was waiting and, and, you know, that's not really how things always work. Yeah, and they also, they don't really teach that kind of business move in most, I mean, in most, uh, most academia doesn't teach the practical business side of any sort of program that you're in. I mean, be it art or writing or many, but especially in the arts, they, they don't teach you how to do that, but they, they also don't teach doctors how to, you know, start a practice. They teach you everything about the body, but then sort of send you out the door. So that kind of information is really kind of difficult to, to know. Even if you are, you know, very talented. I should have known with all my years of design experience and dealing with with freelance clients, I still should have known. There's all these woulda, coulda, shoulda this whole time. There's the, if I had done anything close to any amount of self-confidence and getting myself out there, I would have probably been working on Alpha. Because it came out right right after I got out of school. And so if I was trying to get a, a fantasy portfolio, I should have been going up to Gen Con when I was in art school. But I didn't. You know, that's on me. And also it doesn't, doesn't help that none of the instructors were big on fantasy. Um, yeah, the, that's, that's, that's another shitty thing about... Uh, you know, I was like a lot of the like I've heard this from many other artists that do magic that they don't consider illustration as a fine art, which it obviously is. Um, yeah, the the strangest part is my school had just graduated Alex Ross, and a few years before that, I don't know exactly how maybe more than maybe more many years than few years, but Thomas Blackshear. And in the illustration world, and, and if you've seen any of their stuff, mm -hmm. there's a there's there's a lot of fantasy going on. All the paintings that they hung up in in the halls to you know kind of like highlight these artists, they're all fantasy paintings. 
It's a weird. It's a weird prejudice, isn't it? Yeah, it it really had been, um, and I'm glad that the things have changed a lot. But it 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 didn't help at the time. Like I I feel like now, um, especially with the internet, uh, any student that ever reached out to me that was like, hey, how do I get some of this kind of fantasy work? I'm like, well, at some point you need to go to an event where all the people who who hire fantasy artists are at, or you need to meet other artists. So um, that it's so much easier to get that information now. And I should have known, I should have just gone up to Milwaukee and, and looked around and talked to people at least, hey, how do I get your job? But, um, there is a there, there's a high level of of uh, insecurity issues and shyness issues and um, how many of these issues can we stack on each other before you yeah I'm just not gonna go because I'm scared yeah and I mean I also can understand from the point of view of where doing art direction for you know like you know if you're doing like graphic design st style stuff versus like the world of fantasy artwork. I mean, even though it would, you know, you know, 2020, you can see how it makes sense that you should approach freelance the same way, but I can see why there would be a divide and you might be like, oh, maybe this doesn't work the same way. As, right. You know. Right. It was, it was still, yeah, it was a very new experience. Um, and, and artwork is always something that can feel really close and they're judging you and, and, they, you know, like if they don't like your art, then you're a terrible person. So there's a lot of that kind of crazy stuff that can kind of fly around your head when you're doing some of these art interviews. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot, but I got to meet everybody and I got, I got invited to some of the, the after events and they invited all the people that they interviewed that they liked Um that that they felt were close and so i got to meet a whole bunch of other artists that were at some point going to start working on their uh, properties so, so who was like your grad who was like your in your freshman class like who were some of the other people that were uh well in san diego it was uh i met christopher burdett there um at that party um let's see at a uh, couple gen cons later once uh, uh, John Stanko told me to come help him um, so I can help run his booth and see how it goes. And, and also, again, this is the, this is where you're going to go meet people. Yeah. And so it was uh, me, Mark Chef and Mark Winters. We nice. were like this little team <clears throat> and, and it, what we would do is we would, you know, go hang out on the floor um, trying to find places to to either have a portfolio drop or someone who's willing to do an interview. So, and then we would meet back up like after an hour or two and share other people we've met so that then the other, other guys can go and talk to that same art director. So we would share who was willing to look and, and kind of cover the whole floor uh, the best that way. So, and I I know I'm pretty sure we all got work that year, and That's I know, awesome. I mean I know I did. Um, I'm fairly certain that everybody did, and, and eventually, of course, Mark yeah, Winters. Yeah, yeah. Our end, <laughs> definitely got work in the end for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, when you the one thing about your work that is is really impressive is the fact that you uh, like I mean I don't know how you managed to do but the the, the minutia of, of your work like you put. Like the little details you focus on that. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's, it's truly something to behold. I mean, I don't know uh, if you've always been inclined to paint that way or if that's just like, that was you trying to be, be impressive, but it hasn't like wavered either. You're, you're still very like uh, detail focused. Um, where was that? Was that your style from the get go or was that developed for magic? Uh, I kind of think that's just the way that um, that I just that's just the way I naturally approach painting. Um, I've you know of course I've had instructors along the way for everything I've done, 
but uh, at, at the same time, there's a lot of things that I just kind of did on, on my own um, and, or, or they just kind of grow on their own. Like, you know, I've got all these great instructors that kind of help kind of like when you see a tree and it's got like a, like a piece of tape to like kind of get a branch going in a certain direction. Right. So those are kind of like the instructors they are kind of getting you going in the right direction. And then the rest is still kind of up to you. Um, so I, I kind of think that's where I've been with a lot of my work. Um, uh, one of the things that, that came up with uh, one painting I did early on uh, had a lot of this uh, like fiddly architecture. And it's the kind of architecture that I, just, I really love, you know, like uh, any of those um, uh, uh, ages where there's a lot of interesting architecture. Uh, it, I mean, I love it, but at the same time as an artist, oh, that's so much work. And, and sometimes when we're working, there's this like, well, how much detail do I put in uh, to I still need to, I still have X amount of time. And if I put in a ton of detail, then I'll never get it done. And, but I loved it. So I was like, well, I don't want to detract from it or take it away. Just so I have like a simple wall that just, that I couldn't do that. So uh, part of it was learning to like lean into the, it being uncomfortable to, to do but the result was something that I wanted. So, right. So I'm good. That's kind of what I, that back and forth of this is what I want to express versus also, well, I still need to get this done. Um, but it is funny. Like, I still don't think I put in enough detail. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I do try to do is I paint kind of big so that um, when I reduce it, it feels a little tighter. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that, that, how big how big do you paint? Like, if you were to like just a r random uh, example of like, like, what's your average? Eighteen twenty four is a uh, is an easy uh, size to pull out. Um, some some subjects require slightly different sizes depending on. Um, it's possible usage or just my comfort in the the focus area. Um, if 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 the focus area is still a little too small, <clears throat> and sometimes well, it, it's talked about in terms of like head sizes. Um, so sometimes the painting will need to be determined by the head size. Mm. So, um, it if it's just going to end up where the like the main character's head even at 18 by 24 it's just going to be too small well now i've got to inch it up a little bit so that i can increase the head size and I, uh there there's a painting that will come out in a in a couple sets down the road that um normally like i said i would paint 18 by 24 but i had to switch to something smaller because of the the size of some of the objects. It was just like, oh, this is just gonna be way too big. And so I had to reduce it a little bit to to kind of make it a little smaller than than normal. Yeah, wow, that's very interesting. Now, also think, well, I, what, I, what I do love about your stuff is that not only do you, uh, you slip in the storytelling, which, I love that. I I always you can always tell when an artist is throwing in a little bit of their own, uh, you know, kind of creative background. But you are really good at slipping in violence without it being really like in your face. But when you when you um take when you take a step and you look at some of the pieces and they they're like like just like maybe a rivulet of blood like running through or like uh, I mean or carry on crow where you don't if you look at it up close you're like. Oh wow, this is this is vicious. Um, but yet it seems to go by like it seems to go by not the censors, I don't want to say censors, but it doesn't seem to to get flagged or does it get flagged? I mean, is your stuff 
more violent and you get told to pull back um because you you sort of are good at doing that sort of you are good at doing that like um like i've never i've never had a piece where i've had to change it and even the one i had one and it was a recent one just because something about um i think wizards had just been just a little more um into what kind of blood they're showing and where and i think that might be for some more of the do we do we tamp it down now for some of the foreign markets yeah be an issue so we don't have to have two pieces of artwork but um um so i i gave them one with and one without and they were able to still do it with it but oh well this would be the the one that um uh with the two crazy guys the front and the back yes yes uh i can't remember their names offhand it's but you did you did a movie about it and your friend yeah. your friend had modeled uh, your... yeah so so on the on the on the white side there's a little bit of blood on the street but on the the black side i actually had some blood in the jar with the hand like it was a freshly cut hand yeah. I had to take the blood out of there, but that's it. That's the only time I had to rein in my violence. But generally, I, I um, that's just the way that I, I prefer to kind of have that level of violence. A, a few of the things that reasons why that would be for me be one, uh, there's the this storytelling thing that I heard at some point that 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 awesome action of like saying like a guy's getting his head chopped off now if they say they needed it i would just do it <laughs> but that that action of it happening um is, is something that that doesn't uh doesn't always make people stop visually because it's an action like if you're reading a comic you're just going to keep going it's not always a page that people are going to settle on and mm. also it's an action that shows the story's done you know there's there's no other outcome for that that character who just got his head chopped off because it's off it's done the the action is over so the idea for the kinds of images that i want to make would be to try and one of um i, I like the idea of painting something that I want to hang on my, I would want to hang on my own wall if possible. And also to try and not totally complete that story. So that, that either some other part of the story where there's, you know, it's written or whatever that, that does finish it, but I don't want to make it visually finished. Um, at least that's, that's my approach with, with uh, making a, a single image now if it was a comic then you've got that opportunity to have the before and the after but making one single image i want to prevent that um well one thing that i noticed was a skittering heart stopper i i've looked at that card a thousand times and it wasn't until recently that i saw the foot oh right the my 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 first merfolk <laughs> <laughs> that's is that wait really no yeah, that, that that at the time it was a it was a joke, mostly because I had I think I'd done a little interview with uh, some magic players who focused on blue and really liked merfolk. So I I think it, the our conversation is that it started because I sent them some merfolk tokens and we went back and forth. We did a little interview, and I think it was like a uh, uh, one of those. Uh, 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 like th those uh, uh, trivia questions, like which 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 piece of art of mine had uh, has a merfolk in it, and that that was the answer because it's just a foot. Okay, see, I thought maybe that was just because I thought you know blue corpse like dead, just you know like bodies turn you know that color. But uh, that's interesting. And, you know, because when I saw that, I, I was like, well, it's obvious Sorcerer's Spyglass <laughs> is the mermaid one. Which well, I, that, well, that had come after. I know, I know. But I was, I was watching it in hindsight, and I was like, 
And I didn't even think, and I'm like, well, it's that one. And then I'm, and then they're talking about that. And I'm like, I don't see a merfolk in it at all. And it was, I was just like, D- that's, that's crazy. That's fun. Oh, now like vivisection. Now that's a notorious card because I, I feel like no matter how you, how, I was going to say, no matter how you slice and dice it, uh-huh. um, it's, it is always a very like horrific card. And, um, and now, I, this is my personal opinion, but um, Crimson Vow and, and Midnight Hunt were a little tame on the horror aspect, especially for Innistrad. That was one of the cards that was not. And um, I wanted to know what the brief was for that and what kind of uh, freedom you were given, because it was it's a very interesting piece. It's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on in that. Uh, well, the brief was kind of simple in the sense that it, it 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 wanted it to show kind of all that stuff that i kind of laid out and at the time um i was getting a lot of cards that essentially for me just were like oh paint is still life um and so that's all i did was i created a still life for me to paint now all the horror aspect that's on the lighting that was yeah. my the opportunity at the time that it was a, a <clears throat> they were leaning into that kind of that that horror aspect and i i kept seeing like that that uh the old movies where it would be the set and then the flash of lightning through the window kind of lights up this thing and then it goes dark um so that was that moment of the the lightning from the background kind of that dark with that dark shadow through the window that was i spent more time worrying about the shadows from a paned glass window to kind of give that feeling of that lights coming from the outside in um then uh then a lot of other stuff i i really worked hard on that i think i i made made fake windows and lit them just so I could see how the shadows worked and stuff like that. As I, yeah. I really wanted to get it right. Well, you you even managed to create the effect that the way that like it would look go, coming through glass because you can't just like you know obviously you can't just do it you know as if nothing's there. You have to imitate that 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 look that it gets coming through a glass pane window pane right. And it, yeah. it feels that way. So I mean, congratulations. That uh, it was fun. I think I sculpted. I sculpted something. Oh no, no. What I, I had, um, I had a, a sculpture from an anatomy class. That was the skull with some of the the tissue Muscle. on. Yeah. But that that was just supposed to be like clay. So if it comes off feeling a little grosser or more real, that's cool. But yeah, it was just an anatomy class where I was laying on muscles on, on a skull. So I could see how they work. It just felt like a perfect addition to. Yeah. Uh, oh, and also one of the things I wanted to do in the book, it said just it would it could have a book, maybe with some diagrams, and then like pins in the book that would like highlight some things with some like notes on the pin. And I wanted to make sure that the drawing, I think it's on the other page. Mm-hmm drawing of the creature from my other painting mm-hmm. from yeah from yeah the, two this, the, the monster there yeah so i needed to have that in there as well and like and i love that because you know i mean i think because with easter eggs and, and and wizards you know it's not really a thing that people do because you know like i think you had said that in a previous interview that you, you don't throw surprises at your art director yeah um, no they know beforehand it, it, they, they'll let us know like that there's an opportunity but just let them know so that nobody is surprised on their end um, <laughs> yeah. nobody nobody wants to deal with something that you put in that maybe you shouldn't have or maybe you didn't really know like i i i think i i accidentally had uh the triforce in spy kit and they're like uh, it was on one of the um, one of the stamp seals. Uh, I needed a, a design for the stamp seals, and I had the Triforce in there. And they're like, "No, nah, we can't. 
do that. And I wasn't trying to do it on purpose. It just, yeah. It I mean, just, it's... but, but we, it was a discussion and I easily changed it uh, to something else so that it doesn't exist. <laughs> um, but yeah, as far as that goes, you know, uh, what I'll do is I'll send the final art and then I'll like, I'll highlight certain sections and explain this is what this is this is what this is just like in um um urza's tome that <laughs> one specifically said throw in all the easter eggs you want you know so i was able to throw in a lot of little pieces from books and even some of the woodwork from donato's original card um as well uh so you know at least i i'm never trying to get away with something or cause trouble you know i i think easter eggs are great especially for all the the fans who are paying attention and looking and care and plus it just it just ties the world together mm -hmm. i agree i agree 100 percent. i mean i understand the art director's perspective in a sense that if you start to do the easter eggs then it becomes an expected thing and then you know, then then they're they're having to paint to to the Easter egg, which I, that I understand. But I also sort of I, I love a good, I love it when when it is something that can be you know done and, and yeah. thrown in there. Um, I, I guess I also never thought of the concept of of canon either. If I throw something in in there, you know, I guess there's a level of canon to it yeah. that now that thing is there in that world in that time mm -hmm. so um uh i guess that's that's another job for someone the continuity expert that like um uh, but I, I i could see that that could be an issue um i mean there's the easy ones that you just don't do like you don't throw in planeswalkers left and right and in the background <laughs> That'd so, be funny, right? Just yeah. Throw in, like, you know, a Liliana next to the Nightmare Horror. Just be like, what? I mean, I, the, 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 the only reasons to do that at times is to, you know, from the artist, like, well, I, I could maybe make my card more popular to use or maybe make the artwork more valuable or whatever. Um, but uh, I would never do it on purpose. I, I did push it past what was asked for in the shard token you know that piece they just said the hand or the arm that's all they needed and i was like well i've, I've got an opportunity here to paint an awesome new character yeah. so even though we only need this part well i'll do a little more and they could just crop it off but i was like well i'm gonna take this opportunity to uh, do what i can uh Right. And you just give them the option to choose to be like, listen, you can cut it here if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. And that's sometimes we'll show that and, you know, we can do an overlay of a card and be like, here, you could do it like this or you could do it like this. Um, but yeah, the, there's always the option to crop it out. Um, and I did it in the sketch. So it's like, I didn't like just show the arm and then do this extra painting. I showed in my sketch. This is what I'm planning on doing. I mean, it's it's really it's effective, and and again, it's it's that subtle it's that subtle thing that you're good at. Like you sort of just like you can sneak in something really poignant in like a like a corner that you know, it's just it, you're it's, it's there's consistent consistently throughout your work. There is there's that nuance there. Um, my question about the nightmare horror is um, that's uh, that was you know uh, put together with um cha uh, Chainer's uh, uh, shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Chainer's Torture. Ch uh, I think I'm mispronouncing it, but uh, it's it's uh, Vincent Prose's artwork. And then you're the Nightmare Horror Creature Token. Now, I was looking at his piece and I was wondering, did you guys, uh, was there any collaboration as far as what the look of the Nightmare Horror was? Because I see like multiple eyed things in his saga artwork. And then I wondered if there was some sort of, uh, some sort of connection, you know, because when you have these two things that are intrinsically linked together, um, uh, what what is the way that that, that is done? Uh, let me take a look real quick. I, my first thought was like, no, I we there's there's very little 
Um, Chainer's Torment, I'm sorry. There, there's very little ability to, okay. Okay, yeah, I had his sketch. So if I had his sketch, that means I had an inkling. Um, but I didn't have his sketch in the sense that I knew that that my artwork was going with that artwork. Really? That's, that here, here's some reference for you to work from. Ah, so, that's interesting. Yeah, because it, 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 I think I've only worked on one card where they they were like, oh, you might want to reach out with this artist to to know what's going on. And, and that was actually for, you see a pair of goblins. And my plan was I had, and also uh, uh, Nadar. So oh, okay. I had, in both of those, I had some extra party members. And <clears throat> so I was able to get some artwork from like Eric Deschamps for the, for the wizard. But um, Jesper hadn't worked on on the uh, the ranger yet, so I was like, "Oh man, I I don't I don't know what he's adding or what kind of feel he's going to give this ranger or if he's in a kind of costume it might have that's slightly different." So, and, and he, I mean, we we chat enough that I was like, "Hey, I'm doing this," and he was either on vacation or just that wasn't in his queue for like getting to it yet so i had to i had to uh finish both of those without his existing yet and then wow. his like a, about a week or two later and thankfully everything lined up uh, with that that's what concept work is for so that the it was it was pretty close um at least i think so but yeah i mean like Normally, I would have been like, no, I don't have any clue what Vince's was going to look like. But I just went through my references folder and I was like, oh, I've got Vince's drawing. And it's an unnamed JPEG, which means I pulled that out of my email, which that <laughs> would have been from the, uh, uh, the, the commission the email. You know, on one of the pieces that I, this is a non-magic piece, but it's, it's really, it's fascinating, is that um, the ritual, I believe it's called, and I'm curious about what your your intentions were, or at least the story in your head was, because we're looking at a um, you know, a you know, there there it's a, a woman who is is either dead or is going to very soon be dead, being carried up to uh, assuming some sort of altar uh, to be sacrificed. Now there's two men carrying her, and then there is a woman carrying her, and interestingly enough, the woman is looking she's she's grabbing the arm of the man that's next to her almost as though she seems more interested in being close to this like guy uh and she's she's i mean she seems almost kind of dazed or out of it like i was curious what was the inspiration behind that piece because the dynamics of the, how the people interact in that is it's it's very curious to me so I, it was a early early piece maybe my second Gen Con runaround where I picked up some work. It was actually for a game that disappeared. <clears throat> I'd gotten all the work I had, but in between doing all the work um, and getting paid, it, it went from going great to, oh, we're, we've run out of money and we're bankrupt and no more game. And since we didn't pay you, then this now it, it became you know, the, it became my artwork or whatever, how, however that works. But it was uh, definitely, um, it was a card. I, I don't understand what it was meant for. It was, again, the game came out and disappeared. And uh, let's see. And it, and it, all it says was a smallish angelic being being lifted into a bright glow by multiple other angelic hands and at the time so like it could have just been hands but then if you think about the amount of hands in a human body well i mean 
that a card can't just show hands and the body as easily as well, we're, they're too yeah. small. So yeah. I just extended the whole thing. And it, it, again, I was always been focused on figures and this felt like an opportunity to do a figurative painting. And it was early on in my like figuring out how to work with models. And I had some friends come over. Um, so it's the same girl. Um, and, and, and no one was actually lifting anybody, but now I would totally do this if I, if I could, like, I would totally, I would get, get all the people and try to make something sort of work, uh, almost like a movie producer. Cause that's what it started to dawn on me, um, early on looking at, uh, the process of all these epic paintings and there, and it just really hit me that those were all the the movie producers of the past they not only had to do the paintings but they had to get all the models and stage it all mm -hmm. they were basically doing a, a a one moment stage movie play whatever you want to think about it but they kind of had to do it all and if they were using models they had to get all the models yeah yeah um <laughs> but okay so uh, I think I was just trying to show uh, a, a lot of emotion in this thing. Like, I don't necessarily see her as having being connected to the guy so much as having an emotional response to this this being that is is. I, we don't know if she's dead or not, or if she's kind of getting a healing spell. Oh, At least yeah, okay. See, it is that it's this whole thing that that it, it's the community community effort um so i don't know if you if you've seen critical role and every time they've got to bring back a character <clears throat> they've got to always add something personal and mm -hmm. uh, all their cast members are crying and stuff like that so uh very similar to where i feel like this would be like it's a group effort to bring this character back Okay. See, well, then there you go. That's just interpretation because my 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 dark head was was taking it another direction. But that that that's valid too. I mean, I guess that's the cool part about about art, right? And well, plus it's you know, it's, a, it's a pretty sometimes, awesome. Sometimes uh, other people's stories are way more interesting than mine. Do you have an example of that, like specifically where somebody came and told you their version of your artwork that you were like, oh wow, that's that's way Cool. Well, I, I, I didn't, I, I don't recall. Like a guy sent me an entire story of uh, he wrote about a painting of mine that he liked, um, and at the time, my only connection to the painting was it was the worst struggle of a painting I'd ever had, um, and it was one that I did at the master class. It was, it's actually the. Um, uh, image I've used for my cleric token. Okay, with, okay. And uh, it it was a bit of a nightmare. There, there's still at some point if I have the time, I have the original sketch that I still love the sketch. And and at the time, there was um. The, the the sketch being where I wanted to be and the process being the ability to get there. So it was uh, a very torturous uh, process through a lot of perceived failures or being stressed out. Um, I even had uh, in the middle of the week uh, Julie Bell came by. Now, this might have been like my third or fourth master class. Um, so I, I, that means I've been going for the last three, four years. And and Julie Bell came by and asked if this was the first time I had ever oil painted. So that was pretty funny. It was nothing on her for like saying like, oh, I'm not trying to say that she hadn't paid attention or anything like that. You know, but when you do a workshop, and trust me, I, I've been there. It, it it can be 
so many people all at once that you're trying to concentrate on that that um it, it's easy to lose track of names and faces and stuff even if you've seen them a few years in a row um and, and when it's all you you could maybe feel like oh i can't believe she didn't remember me or think this is my first time but I mean, it was which, a lot of stress which cleric token is it the is it the the the, the man or the, the the woman is it oh it's the guy it's with the the mace okay all right um well i guess i'm i'm looking at your site but i, I don't know if i'm seeing that one now you're maybe it's not in your you, you know maybe you don't have it um Oh yeah, it's yeah. There's like cleric of the sun. Yeah, there's this cleric token for the sun and cleric token, and then yeah. the city's blessing, and then there's two female clerics. But oh, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't seen my site in a while, so maybe it's not showing up when it should. Now, but it's the- it's still like this bald guy in a suit of armor and holding a mace. That's simply what it was, and I couldn't. I couldn't make it work. I couldn't figure out how to design. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, I see it. I see it. I couldn't figure out how to design the armor correctly. I couldn't figure out how I wanted to paint the armor. It was just all these things stacking up. And it, it was, I learned a lot from it. And at the time, what I learned was what was happening was getting a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Everyone with a who could paint was telling me how to paint or how to design things. And so everyone was coming at me and um, I wasn't prepared for all the information. So I didn't know what to do with it. And everything was taking me further and further away from my original design or my original idea. So when that happens, these images, they they no longer really be, feel like my own anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've had that a few times enough to know that as soon as that's happening, that you know all communication needs to shut down. Not that I don't need anyone else's help, but I'm realizing that it, it I have an opportunity to reflect on on all the information that's been given. And I know what I want to do. And it's, I need to figure out how to proceed from there. Because as soon as a, an image gets taken away from me like that, then there's a lot of passion that's gone. Yeah. Like 90% of the passion is all gone. And then I just don't care about it anymore. Yeah. That's that makes sense because it sort of becomes like when you know you've got like all these fingerprint smudges all over the glass. It's just sort of it would become you. It becomes you know Homer's car. <laughs> <laughs> that Simpsons episode where it just has it just has so much going on that it's just I, it, it's out of control. No matter how it looks to someone else, for me that piece I, it. it that that spun out of control and I, I lost control of it. And and I still love the original sketch and I want to go back and I want to paint that sketch. And yet you got this incredible story from somebody about that that card that gave you yeah, such a that turmoil. He doesn't know all of that, but he he just loved the painting. And I think I I, I was at Gen Con and sold a print of it. Uh, I think it was the only print I may have made or something like that. And he just couldn't, he just couldn't get enough of it. I don't know why he didn't buy it. He could get it fairly inexpensively, but um, yeah, it was a an intense, but it was a, a thing I needed to go through. I needed to go through that situation to know what to do with it in the future. Now I know how to handle a situation like that. Not, hmm. not, and not think that anyone or anyone that's trying to help me is not trying to help me, which it sometimes feels like. It's just that I have an opportunity to like step back and and know what I need to do to move something forward. Um, yeah, and, and the best thing that it's done for me is that like when I'm 
doing teaching at the workshop with Jeff Miracolo is I try and bring that with me. I try and bring that experience so that I don't um, put that on an, another artist, you know, because I, I always want to, I always want to ask them if the advice I gave them is helping them stay true to their original intentions. <laughs> because, you know, uh, every instructor at these events um, or workshops, we've all got so much experience and we can always answer all of these questions and we have solutions, you know, and, and we all have different solutions that are all 100% valid. And sometimes those solutions can throw that artist off what they might have intended because we don't know what they intended. We just know how to solve the problem and try to make their image look better to us and make it go a direction that we would take it. That doesn't mean that's how they would go. So I, I, I wanted to make sure that I don't ever do that to someone. Now, did you, with the teachings, did you, um, was that, was that something that you had envisioned, you know, maybe prior to doing or, or is it a, just an evolution into it? I mean, no, it was, the, it, it was the exact same situation as starting to get work. So I mentioned that I had gone to Gen Con to help out John Stanko. And then John Stanko after that is like, all right, next year, you're ready. It's time for you to do this. And I was like, no, I can't. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And he's like, you're, dude, you're, you, but you're so ready. And, you know, so there's a little bit of this, no, I'm not good enough yet. And so when Jeff started up this workshop and, you know, he's asking all the, you know, people to be instructors that he's really, you know, he's really comfortable with. And we've been doing so many events and we live close enough that like, I'm like the perfect person that he would ask. Um, and of course I'm like, I don't know, Jeff, I don't know if I'm ready yeah no yeah so it was a lot of back and forth and and it, it was the same thing he's like dude you, this is you're you're perfect for this over you know my insecurity of it um so that's it it took a little just just a little pushing over you know like the parent like pushing that kid down the slide yeah yeah it, it just took that little push you know and i'd imagine it's been incredibly enriching i mean i it looks it looks like it's an amazing thing to be a part of. Yeah, I I I really enjoy it. It's still intimidating to me a little bit to think that you know, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. But you know, then then there's great um, teachers. You know, like you know, early on uh, when I was doing some video stuff, even then I felt that way and. Mark Chef was always reminding me that, you know, a teacher just needs to even just one hour more of, of, of experience makes you a teacher that you can pass on that information. Just even an hour more. Has there been any moments where you felt like you, the work you did with a student got an effect that, that made you proud of them and made, you know, was, was something that felt like you you connected and, and made the right steps yeah there yeah there there been a few of them and uh the first the first year um was really pushing uh a lot of things that that felt like these bizarre taboos over the the decades it just they're they just they're so nonsensical such as what uh reference <laughs> okay <clears throat> simply using reference had been such a bizarre taboo like you're not supposed really? to have any yeah I, I don't know how to explain it it's it, it it makes no sense it's sort of like a you know a writer <laughs> not reading oh, we don't touch a dictionary or a thesaurus yeah. don't learn how to read yeah, it's like what? So, so I was really, really adamant about, you know, just destroying that wall 
you know, that wall, you know, I had to bring down that wall. And uh, so my, my, my talk was all about reference. I wanted people to see how far back in history people have been using reference. This wasn't, this isn't a new thing. This isn't. Yeah. So, and I, and, and I, and the, a couple of people just really were like, Oh, okay. And they, you know, they, they, they quickly sculpted up some stuff um, and then took some photos and lit it. And then they they instantly saw a lot of solutions. You know, the lighting shows you the shadows sculpting something gives you a basic form and it could it could be a height relationship to something else or you know just setting up a little scene at all of those things it's just it's just information yeah i mean it's a strange sort of gatekeeping i guess because i guess then the, the if they're going to go with that logic then the purest artist would be somebody who was born with no eyesight whatsoever because if you're using if you're if you're not using references you're still using your memory of what a human being or a turtle looks like right. so you know it's still you're referencing it it's just it's it's a memory you're referencing i mean what what makes that more authentic than using a, a like an actual model and or, or a photo or whatever I mean, yeah it's been, i mean I don't, I don't know i don't know where it came from i well I think it's a relic from the 60s and the culture wars between the U.S. and Russia. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, the, the, you know, the, 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 that kind of pop art. Oh, the, okay. So all the artwork from that time, it's really interesting. You know, I think there's a connection to Julia Childs, his husband was one of those, those guys working with the CIA to huh. get get a lot of the um the uh gallery shows happening in europe because it was it was that like new and modern versus old and stodgy and, and the old and stodgy art was very traditional like the the russian tradition um that is shared with uh uh, uh western china or mm -hmm. in general but you can see that in a lot of Russian and, and the, the borders are close enough that the schools. You can yeah, there's some that. leading over of, of, of styles and stuff. Yeah, just just this, the, the 19th century tradition of, you know, you've got to paint, you know, you got to work from life. You got to build up on your drawing skills, et cetera, et cetera. Everything that you need today in order to do all the jobs that everyone wants in concept art and video games and movies, like you need all those skills. So all that stuff's coming back. But at the time it was a, it was a cold war. So it was even trying to get, I, I don't know the whole history of it, but I just know that that was a thing. So that affected our art schools and that affected art education. That's that whole you know, paint what you want from the you know sixties and seventies and stuff. And that, that is, that's art, interesting. Yeah. That's so, interesting. like Greg Manchez had to deal with it, and he he went to school you know well before I did. But as someone who wanted to paint representationally, even he had to battle that stuff. You know. That's so it, yeah, it's just been like, this this long carry over to now a lot of universities are starting to change all their curriculum because students are coming in like i want to learn life drawing i want to learn fundamentals i want to learn anatomy i want to learn perspective i want to learn all these things so i can go work for uh work on an mcu movie or yeah. you know the next star wars or this video game or or whatever all the and those are the skills you need and so all these schools are like, uh, well, we haven't taught that in 50 years. We don't, we know how to, we, <laughs> we do an Andy Warhol class. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of, I, I know there's been a lot of shakeup in, in that world. Um, and, and I know like 10 years ago when, um, when, you know, I started getting back into this, my only options were the workshops, um, or or other you know there wasn't i couldn't have gone to a university and come out 
four years later with any skills to to get into this field i had to do it all on my own yeah that's that 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 blows my mind and that's also a fascinating idea that i never thought about before but the fact that politics world politics influencing the educational aspects of art like that 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 makes sense because i mean obviously you do artwork that can you know make political statements and do that you know but i never thought of the reverse happening but i guess the teaching of art is susceptible to whatever um whims or influence that can happen to it that it going out yeah and i'm not saying i'm not saying that's 100 percent blanket but it was mostly out there and of course there's always you know, schools with programs who focus on illustration and people who knew like, okay, we got to teach these kids all the things that they need in order to get a job to say work on uh, advertising. You need to be able to draw it. You know, we still had plenty of artists coming out that could do uh, the artwork necessary, like say for, um, you know, when, you know, a Coke can that needs to look, hyper realistic right there was still that kind of stuff it was it was happening but that was also happening at the same time when structures were like you want to work on fantasy we ain't got time for you so so even you know there's opportunities but you had to kind of i, I will always tell a student like go take a portrait class or a still life class or any of these kinds of class where you're focusing on on building those skills that you need you don't have to tell them you want to work on fantasy if that's going to influence the instructor or not you still need to learn the stuff you know just you could just change up your still have objects to you could paint a sword instead of you know right. a cereal hmm. um with your with some um, the classes that you guys offer is there any like way in the future i don't know if there if there's a way to do this and i mean probably be a huge endeavor but like uh, to have like a way to record it or maybe have students audit it so they could watch it through some sort of like live feed or like do a, a like maybe a removed version of it where it's like it's not <laughs> as, as maybe it... i wish but i just it's so fluid mm. it, it it you would like even if there was a documentary it would still not really cover everything because it's i mean it's literally like you know like you're standing there talking to one student and as soon as you walk away, someone runs up, Oh, I've got a question. So you're just constantly running around and then you've got other little things that you need to work on gotcha. you know, for the demos or lectures. Um, so yeah, it could be really difficult to, uh, to have any of that. Cause it's not at all. It's not at one spot. There's like five or six rooms. You're just going from room to room to room. Right. Right. And yeah. Like, it's really just something that's just got to go. Right. So um, a quick bit about the, the um, Patreon tokens, a uh, couple of things. Um, I won't keep you for much longer. I won't torture you much longer. But I don't feel tortured at all. This is great. Oh, Good. okay, great. Okay, so um, the Patreon tokens, I'm kind of curious. Like, so I, how does it work? I mean, because there's like a big, you have a big following of people who follow you on Patreon and they get involved with the creations of the tokens. Now, are the tokens um, for like some, are they... Like some of the tokens, like the top tier patrons, or or um, how do you, how do you, like how does that whole process go? Like I'm just curious because you've got like you've got quite a collection of tokens going. I mean, it's it's a it's an it's an army of of them, and I, <clears throat> it's more than I ever thought would exist. Mostly, mostly. So when I'm starting out as an artist, trying to get into this career right um uh you know the portfolio has zero images in it other than like old well or the portfolio is this old thing that old thing this old thing and and as wanting to do fantasy work you know i've got to get a new portfolio so at some point it's really it's at zero right yeah. and and every time I make a new piece, I'm like keeping track. I'm like, you know, I need because the my first week at the, that master class was you need to have like, you know, ten pieces in your portfolio, or you'll hear the uh, an interview go where like this piece is great, so do 
you know, eight more of these, right? So, you know, that you have to do all of the work. So the, when the that count, you're keeping track of it and you're like, oh man, I can't wait till I have a hundred pieces. You know, it's like and when you're at the beginning and every painting's taking a month, you're just like, oh, I'm never going to even get to 10. <laughs> so, you know, so I, I that number has always been, uh, something that's been kind of with me and now it's just like all those tokens are are images that I, I i pretty much made for myself so i still can't believe that it's like i can't believe i've made that much work yeah it's, that i would have that many many tokens because i still need to create a painting for it to exist um and so with the patreon thing um generally like everyone gets tokens um except for i think the i think it's like a two dollar level where you just you just wanted to be there for support i have one guy who just does it because he's waiting for the access to the the, the members only shop to get whatever he wants so it works out to be about the same as if he was he's just a la carte this is what yeah. makes the most sense and so i mean I, I, it's like I'm giving away the store at that point with my low, all the tiers. They get way more than they would normally get if they were buying stuff. So, but the trade off I feel like is well, they don't get to pick what they're getting. So that I feel like that those make the different reward levels. Um, it makes it kind of fair. Like, yeah. when you get a bunch of stuff, well, you don't really get to pick what you get though. Yeah, I mean, that seems that seems fair. But so, if I have questions, I throw it to the group, and it, it, it's that that's been helpful. Um, when when I'm stuck, I throw out I do like, hey, what should be the next one? <clears throat> um, uh, I generally I try and do as much chatting with like I, I it just seems like everyone is just kind of cool. And they weren't expecting to do a whole lot of chatting. They're just like, we love what you're doing. Just send me my stuff. I'm good. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm, it, it's one of these interesting situations where some people who have a Patreon are, they're always trying to grow a Patreon, which that's a good thing. Um, I've kind of, kind of had a, this sort of plateau where, I've all I've had the same number ish for about the last three or four years. I'm not complaining. Um, and that's, that's a that's you, a time to cap up, you know. You would not be surprised how high the percentage is of most of those people having been there either from the beginning or for you know multiple years. I still it floors me every time. You know how often I'm making, sending an envelope to the same name I I recognize, over and over and over and over and over. So it's been great. I love it. That means that they're happy. I don't yeah. I don't know how to get. I don't know how to spread that happiness that that they're happy with the other players. There's millions of Magic players, so um, I'm not really good at advertising. I'm better at painting. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, you know, I mean, it's 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 something else. So like, so like, the, do you like what would be a question you'd ask the patrons? Like, what would be like if you're stuck on something? Like, what what would you ask them? And then what is like, how does that work? Because if you have like you know hundreds of people throwing in their their two cents, well, how do you... It, you let the active, the active few kind of like lead the boat? You know, they're the ones who kind of like take the oars. There's only like two or three oars in a boat, four in a giant boat. So you've got a few people who step up and you let their vo their voices, everyone else seems to be comfortable letting them be the ones and they throw out their opinions. Um, so sometimes I'm, um, if I'm, if I'm open to kind of like getting anything, then I will, I'll let them kind of 
lead that, or maybe I've got a piece that I want to use and I'll let them uh, maybe help me with uh, the the title or the theme. It's got, uh, uh, I'm not sure what to call the the name bar, what that should, what that is. That's the usually the, the kind of the class of the token mm. um, or the type, the token type. And then, and then from there, maybe I'll even have picked a token type. Like uh, recently, I I just did the dragon one from that kind of eBay crossover. So I had a dragon, and there's there's a whole there's two twos, there's five five, six six. There's a whole bunch of them. So you know, I asked them like, well, what would you guys want this to be? And um, and they came back. Well, you know, I knew that five fives were the most popular, but I still, what if they wanted six sixes instead? Nice. So that, but you know, the one guy came back and he just pointed out how many more people will potentially find a use for the five five over a six six or two two. It's true. It's true. Um, so that, that's helpful. I mean, I can get some of that information on my own, but I I do love the interaction. You know, like so I I make these because they're fun for me. It, I tap into my my. Uh, graphic design experience so as much as i wanted to always be an illustrator and i kind of fell into that other world what i like about this is this gives me a positive um thoughts about that past rather than negative i've wasted all those years and i i missed all these opportunities i could have been an illustrator right next to Donato at the beginning or known all of these people back in 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 the early 90s it been an illustrator I missed out on 10 years of being an illustrator with all of these people and all these opportunities and instead of being angry and sad about that I'm like okay well this gives me an opportunity to not hate that time I spent um and plus that uh, I can share artwork with players that they would never see otherwise if you're really focused on the game and you you don't get an opportunity to really dig into every other artist, then at least when I'm bringing these to an event and, you know, like, oh, I love this art, I love this art, they would have never seen it, right? Because it's not on something that that they can use. Right, right, yeah, and well, it's like, uh, uh, for instance, like the, um, it ended up being your minion token, but I think the name of the painting was Fly My Pretties, and I'm, I'm wondering, is that, I mean, was that originally, like, a cool take on the Wicked Witch of the West, because that's, I mean, it's, it, it seems yeah, like... A little bit, it was gonna, it was a, a painting for a store that ended up, the, the funding and timing of the store, just everything fell apart for that that store and and they still bought the painting um I, and i i know it would have sold otherwise um but it was a great i i it was an open i think they just wanted to make sure it had monkeys in it and so well i'm gonna take that and i'm gonna put a figure in it anyway and some flying little demons and now i've got my version of the wicked witch ish or the Wicked necromancer. He's definitely <laughs> wicked. I'll tell you. I mean, like, he's scary. That's a scary uh, wicked witch right there. Like, yeah. So, um, uh, so yeah. That that I got to take that and turn it into a couple of different tokens, and then share that, um, that that image in a way that you know the players are familiar with, right? And then if they really like it, they'll look into it more, but um the that's my favorite part of this whole process is getting getting images in into their hands and maybe i've made an image that really fits their deck or the their style because there's a bunch of uh, options out there and so i'm always kind of honored when someone picks mine um mm -hmm. you know they're uh i'm a fan of a lot of other artists so i'm like well i love these and i love these what a charming guy Aaron is, right? And if you want even more Aaron, check out our Patreon, where we have over 20 plus minutes of uncut, 
uncensored, sizzling bonus content. And you can see it with your own eyeballs by going to patreon.com slash conceptslegends, linked in the show notes below. Um, or at least they will be. Cameraman, why are there no show notes linked beneath me? Because links only work on the internet. Of course they do. What a stupid thing to say. I ought to be embarrassed. You ought to be embarrassed. But speaking of patrons, tonight's episode goes out to... Tap Dancing Christ. Thank you, Tap Dancing Christ. I personally always thought Christ was more of an interpretive dance person than anything, but what do I know? We vampires don't really hang out in churches. Anyway, that's all for tonight, Spell Slingers. Good night! Bye-bye!